Up. Oh, we made it. Twitter says it. We're up. We're live. It's Monday. Talking seas. Hello, everybody. How exciting. How we, we doing, people? people? Trickle in. Good, good. Hanging out. Ready to talk basketball. How's everyone's usual. brackets looking? Dead. Not great. <laughs> Cooked. Up. Bets were good yeah. yesterday. I'll tell you that. Horrendous. Three for three. Houston surviving was big for me, though. I'm still in the mix. Sam, you know um, the commenter bomb.com who always comments yes. on our videos? His bracket right now, 98% correct. Wow, shout out. I in think that's HPTC. like the percentage of bra- – like that's the percentile that, that you are in. No, no. He is 98.7% correct. He is in the top 342,000 in the world. What a beast. Wow. <laughs> He tops the HBTC bracket group. Um, credit to him. He's got some things wrong, so it'll eventually fall. But uh, also top three in the HBTC bracket br- group, our good friend Cam Tavatabai, uh, uh, who's at yeah, 95.6% oh. correct. However, that is soon to fall because he is also the only person in our group uh, whose winner is out because he picked Kentucky to win. So he oh, is, he is that's, cooked. That's devastating. Hello, Pete. Oakland so got him. Cooked. Hello, Pete. Oakland did got him. They, yeah, they okay. did, in fact, get him. Uh, but we are here. Sam, you're rocking a cool 28%. I've fallen down to 54.1% okay. myself. So we are. 54 is respectable. Great. A lot of people, their brackets yeah. are done. So that was just so yeah. bad. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to do? I, I did have Baylor in the final four. So that was a tough one. Those free throws were a killer because it looked but like they might be the- able. What? Who did they lose to? They lost yesterday to Clemson. Okay, yes. And at the end of the game, they went on a run. They were down by 13. And the best player on Clemson fouled out, sending Baylor to the line down by two with, I forget how much time, but let's call it roughly 30 seconds left, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he missed them both, and they lost. Yeah, man. March Madness is weird. Weird time right now. I was watching the – the women's game, Iowa State versus Stanford, which went to OT. Awesome. People were electric. raving about that. Game was sick. Uh, I caught they the last blow for blow. It was very fun to watch. But anyways, we're here to talk Celtics. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, we can start with Drew Holiday. We talked about it on a recent pod. Drew Holiday, according to Adam Himmelsbach of the Boston Globe, dealing with some dead arm. Uh, got hit with a screen against the Washington Wizards last weekend uh, and hasn't played in a game since. Uh, Himmelsbach noted that he's going through some medical treatments, but rest is the best medicine. Drew Holiday seemed in good spirits, I think is the right words. Hello, RJ. Um, so I, my whole thing is throughout this has been, I feel like they're just being way overly cautious, but Bobby, what do, what do you make of this? How concerned should Celtics fans be about Drew Holiday? I'm not particularly concerned. He got the workout in before the game on Saturday in Chicago. And like you said, seemed to be in good spirits. So I think it's one of those things where, As long as the remedy is rest, then this is a non-issue. And it seems like it's that's the case. If it is something more severe, then it becomes cause for concern. But I do think the Celtics got lucky because he did take a hard hit on that screen in D.C. But again, Mm -hmm. it looks to be a situation where it's just a matter of, you know, time being able to heal this. Yeah, I mean, he looked pretty comfortable shooting the ball. Uh, before the Bulls game on Saturday. And from what I remember from the actual replay, he did get hit on the shooting arm, which I did not love. Am I am I mistaken on there? Is the right arm? I could be wrong. I have, I think I it's right know. AC joint sprain is what they're calling it. Yes. So I think he got hit on his shooting arm. He looked comfortable shooting the ball. All the shots were going in. There was no kind of like hitch to his shot. There was no wincing. I mean, I'm sure he could have been on some sort of painkiller if it was really that big of a problem too, but... He looks comfortable to me, and I'm sure he's going to get an ample amount of rest with the Celtics just kind of being in position to, you know, put this whole Eastern Conference race to bed today in Atlanta. I don't really need to see Holiday play any more games until it's time for him to get a bit of a rhythm back before the playoffs. I know Jack and I, we we talked about, does he need to see shots go in here. We don't want to throw him back into a playoff situation where it's like, okay, Drew, go out there. Yes, we need your absolute best to help us win this all-time competitive game. Like, it's going to be helpful if he's out there for, even though it probably won't happen this way, the season conclusion against Washington 
uh, at like a Sunday day game. Like it would be nice to see him just go out there and shoot some threes. Yeah, sorry, I zoned out. I'm <laughs> looking for trivia. Uh, I I don't think it'll be a problem. I feel like the Celtics. I've said it a million times. They're kind of sleepwalking through this last stretch of the season. They have no need Doesn't look to like. go full out. They, yeah, I know. You're. I, I will say, Sam. Play the Celtics. Your tune has changed, and it's been insane to watch the whole. Like, like I'm saying, they're sleepwalking, and usually the Baby Sam response is. It's crazy. Sam would be upset. That's what I'm saying. The, this response would be, it's not good enough. It's not. Sam's like, yeah, it's sick. Good for them. Yeah, and they're still killing everybody. I'm like, oh, what is it? It's like comical at this point. They're just yeah. kind of playing against teams and putting half their team out there and still winning by double digits. They're like, okay, mm-hmm. like, well, it, it's almost like the Celtics did a, a snake draft and they are just like competing against each other. Okay, this group will rest this game. This group will rest the next game. Who's going to be the group to lose first? Yeah, I mean, the, the Bulls shot 57% from the field and lost by double digits to a shorthanded Celtics team missing multiple starters. Mm-hmm. I mean, I said this against the Pistons. Like, I didn't think the Celtics played their best basketball against the Pistons. I also don't think they played their best basketball against the Bulls. In the Pistons game on the playback with Sam, I said, um, by the way, we're the Celtics, back tonight. Are oh, we? Is go. it tonight? Yeah. I thought it was tomorrow or the next Hawks game. <clears throat> That's cool though. Maybe not. Um, I'm gonna. Double I forget. Check that. You keep I just forget which Hawks game it was. Um, I was talking to Sam Bobby during the the Hawks game or the. No, I'm confused. The Pistons <laughs> game, uh, and um, I was like, if they played like this, even against a mediocre team like the Bulls or the Hawks, this could turn a 25 point win into like a 10 point win, or or a six point win. Turns out it wasn't a six point win; it was a ten point win. So, <laughs> still good against a mediocre team like the Bulls. And now you got what Hawks, Hawks, Hornets, Pelicans, Hornets, whatever. Some other mix of bad teams. I know I've got something stuck in my throat, but it's my turn to talk, so I'm trying not to cough. <laughs> he powered um, through. I thought he fully cleared it at one point going over the playback schedule. It no, is tonight, by you. the way. Okay. So if cool. you guys like us, show up. Thank you, Tibbs. We appreciate you. Um, my point is the Drew Holiday, like. You don't need to play him until the playoffs. The only thing I would say is maybe bring him back a couple games before so we can get his three-point rhythm back because he's one of the best shooters in the corner this year. He's one of the best three-point shooters in general. He's he's a top five in in terms of percentage. So you want him to have that going into the playoffs, be in that flow. But at the same time, the Celtics are in a spot where they literally do not need to play him. So I don't know. I'm I'm okay with him sitting out for a while. Yeah, I'm definitely okay with getting Drew Holiday – However much time is required to rest him and have him come back at or as close to 100% as possible, go down that road leading into the playoffs for sure. Ideally, he gets a couple of games in beforehand at the end of the regular season here for shooting primarily, but also it is a tall ask to have him come back in terms of shape and stamina and take on the role that he does defensively right off the bat in a playoff setting where the intensity ratchets up. So I would like him to ideally from those two perspectives, be able to have a couple regular season games under his belt to reacclimate. Yeah, I completely agree. And Jack, I don't know if you saw, but there is a new clip that has surfaced this morning of the man himself getting some shots up lefty floaters, which tell me absolutely nothing, but I mean, does he look like he's in any discomfort at all shooting? He didn't on Saturday either. Yeah. (laughs) My level of concern has dropped significantly. Yeah, Sam, that's why it appears like this is just a matter of rest will heal this. And that's obviously the best possible scenario for Holiday and the Celtics. And why I think they probably can get a couple regular season games under his belt before the playoffs. And and that is the important thing. Like Joey Spatchel is on the ball here. You, you just don't want him to show up to the playoffs like, oh, wait, this is what I'm supposed to be doing on offense. Oh, this is weird. I'm not used to this anymore. And he's just out of rhythm, not able to hit shots. Like the whole appeal of Drew Holiday this season has been his efficiency along with the defense. Like he's taken off much of a smaller role and he's still just nails. They need that when they're trying to compete for a championship. Mm, credit to him. Brian even saying, I don't care if we see him until the second round. I'd bring the entire G League for the rest of the season. Celtics don't need 
They don't need to play guys. They, they don't need to play guys. They're hanging out. I think if the Celtics rested their entire starting lineup, they'd still hit 60 wins. Sam and I are talking about that. Like they, they, they could play the fellas, right? Well, they only need to win it three. Is I know, but if they're playing, if they're sitting their entire starting lineup, that's, that's Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser, who to their credit have been amazing. So like, I guess I uh, give them their fair due, but. Plus you said, uh, you just said the starting lineup. So that means Al Horford's available most it's nights. True. It I is crazy. They, I think they get at least bench. three. Mm-hmm. Um, Bobby, I don't know if you've seen this. We did a video on this morning. Did you see the video of Cedric Maxwell talking about Joe? Yes, I did. So we did a whole video on it this morning. I just want to touch on it briefly because I figured it's in, it's of note. <clears throat> Joe Missoula, uh, per Cedric Maxwell, and shout out to the first of the floor guys who who had him on their show and got the story. Um, Cedric Maxwell was telling a story about Joe was on the court before a game, way before a game. Cedric Maxwell was out there with him. He looked up. He said, Max, which one of these are yours? Uh, the banners he was looking at. Uh, Max told him. And Joe goes, I would give anything to get it up there. And he's got tears in his eyes. And Bobby, I said this to Sam in our video this morning. If that doesn't make you want to run through a brick wall for Joe Missoula, I, I, you're like, you're stubborn. Like, you, I, I, there's no convincing you anymore. Because like, this is everything Celtics fans should want from a coach. Yeah, without a doubt. This is someone who grew up in the region, so he gets it, and he is seen. He's been there for most of the journey for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. He's seen how high they've climbed and how close they've gotten without actually scaling to the summit. So he, more than anything, wants to do it for the region, something he talks about all the time, as well as for, in particular, the guys that have been here and repeatedly come close but not gotten over the hump yet. And so it is absolutely an emotional journey for Joe Missoula, for this team. And right now they understand that while many have the Denver Nuggets as the favorites, the Celtics have the most talented team in the NBA. It's the first crack with Tatum and Brown in their primes together. So it just feels like this is their time. Yeah. And and to your point about those two being in their primes, I know Greeny put out a tweet and he's been on the Jalen train heavy as of late. Do we think Jalen's actually in his prime now? Like, is this what prime Jalen looks like? Like what we've seen since the all-star break. I'm not even talking about the first half of the season where you could point at certain games and be like, he seems uncomfortable. He doesn't really know what his role is yet with all this talent. Since they've come back and started beating the breaks off teams, he has been the head of the snake. He has been just going through guys' chests, taking them in the paint, saying, I'm stronger than you, getting the easy looks right at the rim, and it feels like it's very difficult for defenses to do anything about him. And on top of that, even though he had zero assists in the Pistons game on Friday, he did a pretty good job of making reads. I know we did the playback, Jack, and when we were watching, it was like, ah, oh, he's, he's making the right call. These guys just aren't hitting shots for him. So that combined with the offensive dominance and his lock-in ability on the defensive end that is a huge upgrade from what I think we got last season in the playoffs from Jalen Jalen was still good he was still a star player and he was still great through the first two series of the last uh the 2023 playoffs make no mistake Mm -hmm. he averaged like 25 points a game efficiently with rebounds and assists the Miami series was a terrible unraveling and that's all people remembered He came back and got better this year, and he's gotten better throughout the season. And I feel like that is going to help the Celtics have a leg up on everybody compared to things we have thought about in the past with this team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I I wrote about it after Celtics um, Pistons. I've been doing – I've gotten bored after these games, and so I reached out to Bill, the editor, and say, I I effectively pitched it as these games mean nothing. Can I just write about three random niche things that I noticed in each each game? So that's what I've been doing for the past couple games. And for one of the things – ignore me writing about Sfi's defensive progression Mm. for 10 minutes. Uh, Jalen Brown, the vision, like, look at these passes he made. It, like, didn't count as assists because the guys missed the shots. Like, that's an easy one, right? But that's not a read that he always makes in years past. These next two, like – He's dribbling, finding space all the way on the wing, and then he finds Peyton Pritchard all the way in the corner. Like, that's not an easy pass that's to make. That's a Tatum make. pass. And exactly. he hits – exactly. That's what I was thinking. And then this one, I, we noticed this one on the broadcast. He gets into the middle of the floor, and it could have been a little bit better, but he finds Derek White in the corner for an open th- – like, these are not passes Jalen Brown is making two years ago. And so to see him take this leap, I think – I mean, I've always talked about it, and I know – I think everybody have in general, like, 
if he is making these passes, he is closer to Jalen Brown than he is to the normal, or excuse me, he's closer to Jason Tatum uh, and a superstar than he is to a normal all-star. And that, that is the next step for Jalen, being able to make even the simple ones. And he has been a lot better this year. Uh, and so cre- <clears throat> excuse me, credit to him also just catching up on the chat. Like, appreciate you, Rui. Uh, I agree. Um, and during the season expectations et cetera. And thank you, Michael. I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, shut up, Michael Peters. Uh, but yeah, Bobby, uh, if you'd like to give your thoughts on Jalen Brown too, I didn't mean to cut you off. Definitely. No, I don't think you did cut me off, but um, before I do, Michael Hilly, we're waiting on that Peters Jersey buddy. And then mm. when it comes to <laughs> uh, Jalen and his growth, look, there are levels to being in your prime even. And so right now what we're seeing is I would say it, it seems pretty close to apex Jalen Brown. And that doesn't mean that it's just this year and then that's over, but it seems like we're getting towards the peak of his powers where you combine the physical maturation with the growth mentally in terms of reading and manipulating the game and the energy he has to sustain being a two-way star. We talked before the show about, Hey, does he deserve to be in the conversation at least for an all defensive team, even if he's not going to make it most likely that he's playing near and possibly at that level. Like when you say someone's all-star caliber that didn't make the roster, Derek white. And so with Jalen to be able to consistently lock in against the opposing team's best perimeter player, bully his way to the basket and into the paint, the growth that Jack just illustrated with his reads as a facilitator. And he's t- talked in the off season and throughout this campaign about how much that meant to him to earn his teammates trust on both sides of the ball. And so offensively, specifically in terms of being a playmaker for his teammates with his ability to get you about 28 points a night. I mean, he's just, he's becoming a complete player and certainly for what's asked of him and the role that he wanted to carve out as a leader of this team. Him being able to lock in defensively is something that, was marketed or or pitched to the fan base when he was drafted. He was billed as a young Kawhi. And in years past, in more recent history, the defensive side of the ball hasn't been an emphasis. Last season, you didn't hear much about Jalen's defense. He talked about wanting to make an all-defensive team, and he's definitely taken steps in that direction. As far as the bully ball goes, I love it. I love it for the playoffs. It feels like a more controlled, chaotic offense from Jalen where you're still getting the energetic play, but it's more under control. It's kind. It's a weird comparison, but I still feel a lot like I did seeing LeBron play against the Celtics in his prime where he's just under control, going to the basket. There's nothing you can do to stop me. I am going to go through you. You have to foul me or I am going to score. And fouling Jalen might not be the worst option. I got to say it. It might not be the worst. That's the only thing that I can come out here and be like, I don't love that. The rest, I'm so impressed with what Jalen has improved with this season. He just looks like a more mature player, plain and simple. Yeah. Shout out Jalen. I mean, coming into the year with all the, like the players, the Celtics added, you knew there was going to be some, I don't want to say awkwardness, but adjustments um, for him, especially. Um, and, and he's exceeded expectations with the way he's picked uh, and chosen. Uh, where to focus and what to uh, emphasize in his game. Um, Next thing Celtics uh, have clinched the playoffs. We all know this. Did the, did they clinch the one seed yet or did the bucks win? They clinched the the one seed. So it's all complicated, Mm -hmm. but because of tiebreakers and algorithms and somehow it relates to the Charlotte Hornets losing that they're eliminated from the equation that even though the bucks beat the thunder, the Celtics have clinched the one seed. So it is March 25th and the Celtics have clinched the one seed uh, with 11 games left in the season. They could sit everybody. They could forfeit every game and they'd still have the top seed and home court advantage throughout the playoffs, um, or at least in the Eastern Conference. Bobby, what do you look at as the ideal path for the Celtics from here on out? Because while the Celtics may have clinched the one seed, the rest of the Eastern Conference standings is still up in the air. Yeah, it's congested standings. I understand and respect the people who say, give me the Miami Heat round one. And I, of course, agree that this Miami Heat team looks different than a year ago. Still, that is a team that has a history of shenanigans from what Dwayne Wade did to Rondo to Mm. even after Jalen Brown and Duncan Robinson got into it, 
there were former players saying that Miami is the type of team that will file that away and retaliate and try to seek retribution. So I would rather avoid the Miami Heat, not from a can you beat them standpoint, are they in your cage and all of that. It's more from a I would rather not see some dirty play take one of the Celtics' top six out of the equation moving forward. So give me Philadelphia. I don't believe that Embiid is coming back. And that's a team that if you're the Celtics and you went through a playoff run last season where it ultimately caught up to you that you played around with your food every step of the way, that Facts. you go out there if you're the Celtics and you make light work of the Philadelphia Sixers and you get to the second round. So I stand with Bobby. I would like the easiest possible route to the Celtics advancing. in the. Oh, well. It's a good picture to freeze on, though. <laughs> it is a fun picture to freeze on. Uh, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm back. Welcome I back. made it back. Oh, I made it nice. back. There we go. <laughs> go We're ahead. due for one. It's really asking a lot to get through a 45-minute stream without lagging. Uh, heat culture, I agree with Rui, means injuries. Not enough people talk about Dwayne Wade being dirty. Philly. Sully's always beat Philly. It would be hilarious if they got Philly again in the first round. They just stomped it. It would be right on brand. Mm. Regardless if Embiid plays or not, this is not even a situation where it's like, hey, it's Sixers had Embiid, watch out. Because all I could be like is they always have him and the Celtics just beat them anyway. It does not matter. That That's the fun angle to this. I, I just think it would be fun to laugh at Philly fans. Of course, who, who wouldn't want to see them play the Chicago Bulls in the first round? Come on. Those guys, are you kidding me? You just beat them with half your team playing and – some of their guys actually look decent. No thanks. No, no thanks to playing uh, Miami for sure. Um, I think still the ideal is Sammy made the point uh, a bunch of times. Like, if the Bulls or the, the Hawks make it through, like that, that is truly the dream. Like, if you can get a sub five hundred team, that is it. I, I do think that's unlikely though. Um, so I think the Sixers are the clear like, yeah, bring him here. Um, past that. I don't hate the idea of playing the heat. Like I'm, I'm obviously wary of they are the heat. They will be a pain in the butt to, to play in a playoff series. Um, but I also think it could probably help the Celtics confidence overall, like to just exile that demon early on. Um, <clears throat> Indy is another interesting one, although I think they'd be pretty exhausting to play against. So I, I think you're looking at Philly as like, yeah, that's, that's who the Celtics should want to play. Uh, and so you kind of just have to hope and pray that Miami doesn't, mess around too much because i can't swear on this podcast uh and 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 lose that first playing game like they did last year um although it would be a very miami thing to do it on purpose <laughs> they, they just lose the play <clears throat> yeah they just want to they're like no we want the celtics we're gonna lose <laughs> i don't think just... we can rule that out that miami sizes it up and says we want the celtics round one i would love it says... if the celtics just beat the brakes off them Arjun says sweet. playoff wish list. Bulls, not Orlando. ECF, I don't care at that point. Yeah, fair. Can you please share the current bracket and probability? Uh, yeah, so here is the current standings. This is the current NBA standings, so which is, I don't think there's bracket. I think Bobby If you go Manning, to NBA.com, there is one. A bracket? NBA.com. Yes. Where? Where on NBA.com? The standings. So if you hit standings, it's at the top before you even see the list. <clears throat> ah, here you go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so that's what the current standings looks like. And then I believe, I think Bobby Manning tweeted out like, yeah. So then this is also um, the percentage in likelihood of the Celtics first round opponent. So Miami and Philly are effectively even Chicago and Atlanta also right there, although less so because they are have to go through two games and then Indiana if they fall in. So, I mean, this is just basically telling you they're going to play a play in team, which, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but this is, this is what you're looking at for the playoffs right now. Um, and I got to say, maybe this is just me being like a bum. These two playoff series, not I, not fun. <laughs> I, I, I am not intrigued by either of these Eastern Conference playoff series. If for, for, Not from a Celtics perspective, from like a, a basketball watching perspective. Like, I, it'll be fun to see the magic in the playoffs, but there's no storylines. Like, I want to see the Bucks play the Pacers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yes. want to see uh, uh, the magic play. I guess the rest of this doesn't matter. I guess not. the magic don't really have beef yet. Like they're, yeah. they're kind of like new on the scene. Nobody hates them yet. We're all like semi rooting for them. We're like, yeah, it's cool. Like Paolo has the boys back competitive. 
Show me, show me Cavs forever. Knicks. I want to see Cavs Knicks. Donovan exactly Mitchell versus say. the a team. Rematch? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. give me something. So, um, so it's it's but, not that the matchups have a history between the two teams, but most of them have questions whether it's stemming from their performances last postseason, like the Knicks bogged down against the Miami Heat in round two. Is that offense with the new additions going to be good enough? What does that look like against an Orlando defense that is phenomenal? Jonathan Isaac said he's still getting his win under him, and he just flies around the court, locking entire teams down by himself as a one-man wrecking crew. You talked about Powell leading the way offensively for them, and his growth as a facilitator has been amazing to watch. With Cleveland, that offense sucked last year against the Knicks, and they got bullied despite having the double-big combination. So they made some roster changes in the offseason. What does it look like, and who wins that battle of pace against an Indiana team that flies up and down the court? And if you're the Pacers, does getting Siakam at least pay off in the form of a trip to the second round? So it's not the history or the juicy rivalries or anything like that. It's more so the questions that each team comes into the playoffs with. It would be a little bit fun if we got Bucks Heat. Just a little bit. I wouldn't complain. In the same way, like it would be nice for the Celtics to beat the breaks off Miami. There would be the angle like Milwaukee has to exercise those demons too, because people forget. Bucks have fallen to the heat just as many times as the Celtics have. And they're they sure, and they over. haven't beaten them. Yeah, I would right? say Oh no, they did. They did. They swept them in the first round in 21. I still I would say the Bucks losses to the Heat have been far more uh embarrassing than the Celtics have. And they I They would the say though that Giannis got hurt. That's what Bucks fans would throw. Sure. Out there. Bucks fans love that this guy got hurt. <laughs> sure. It's their yeah. favorite thing ever. Without yeah. acknowledging that Robert Williams was hurt and Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart was hurt. Yeah. Alas. I don't know. Bobby, anything else you want to talk about before we get to trivia? I feel like are we missing uh, I think we just got to preview the Hawks game. <laughs> yes. Enough. Double Hawks. Celtics get Hawks two in a row now. No Trey Young. I believe he's still out recovering from his injuries. Oh, my uh, gosh. So, DeJounte Murray. What? The Hawks is just an afterthought. <laughs> the Hawks. Especially with Trey Young being out, but we do have to talk about it. No Trey oh. Young. No one Yeka Akongwu tonight. No Sadiq Bay. No AJ Griffin. No Jalen Johnson tonight. We're getting the fellas. Uh, oh. Meanwhile, the Celtics, no Drew, no uh, Jordan Walsh and the, the G League guys. Derek White's questionable. Tillman's questionable. <clears throat> and that's all we know so far. Um, I, this just has to be another Bulls game. This just has to be another do what you, whatever you need to do to get the win. Nothing more, nothing less. And walk out of there with a double digit victory and then move on with your life. That's how I see it. This is a long time to be in a very fun city. And it's a chance to kind of blow off some steam right before the playoffs. I think the scheduling gods did the Celtics a favor because they took care of business already and don't need to go out and win these games. So this is kind of like the last party before they lock in for the postseason. And for the second unit, guys, continue to maximize your opportunities. Keep doing what you're doing. So for Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett and company, don't take your foot off the gas. I thought O'Shea Brissett gave him some good minutes on Saturday against the Bulls. So this really continues to be down the stretch the story of the second unit and those guys capitalizing on these opportunities. A huge part of why they're winning by double digits until we get Drew Holiday back. That will become a focal point. And then uh, whoever's out there among the Jays, Jalen Brown, he's going to want to go at least one, if not both of these games in his hometown you know, continue to lead in the right way as they've done throughout the season. So I think in this last 11 games of the season, we should get a live look in the Celtics locker room before the game. Bear with me. And they have a wheel with all these different challenges on the wheel, like almost like a YouTube game where they spin the wheel and they have to do X challenge while also trying to get the win. Because I truly could not care less. Even even like, I mean, technically they have clinched already. So I want to see them win as many games as possible. Plain and simple, like it would be sick if they tied the Celtics record of 68 wins in a season. I don't think it's going to happen just because I know there's going to be a lot of resting, a lot of guys out. Uh, they, I mean, if I don't care, I'm sure they don't care. So it, it would be really fun if it was like, hey, you guys have to play with your left hand for an entire quarter. Hey, you guys have to only shoot 23s. Hey, you guys have to uh, try and get 10 dunks in this game. Like, just something something to spice it up. I don't know if we're getting that. 
I, I, it, it I've mean, been enjoying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I've been enjoying the the Pritchard Hauser of it all. I, I think okay. I get a kick out of like watching some guys who don't usually get um, that playing time get some playing time. I think that's fun. I think it's entertaining to watch. You know, maybe maybe I mean I I wrote. 200 words about Sfi Mikhailo's defense. Like you, you just got to find things to be interested in at this point in the season, because you're not going to get real basketball games for another two weeks, three weeks. Just keep telling myself. I'm like, August, you would love this. August, you would love this. August, you would love this. You would. <laughs> You'd love this in August for sure. Um, no, Jay Davidson's questionable right now. So I, I, it's, yeah, I literally it's, just looked that sounds up. Like, yeah. They're debating whether or not they want to bring him in. Joey's asking about Kyler Kelly. Kelly's got some game, but he's kind of spindly for the NBA. Um, sitting as play him live for the few times. I, I've heard good things about him in the G League. I've heard he's progressing pretty well, but uh, I don't know. Uh, is Pro MP disrespectful? I think it's respect. I said this to Sam on the last podcast. I don't care if you're going up against guys who haven't been in the league. They are grown men, and you scored 92 points on them. That is ridiculous. I don't care. <laughs> 92 points is insane, no matter what level of basketball it is. Also, I like the armband. Show off the biceps. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. That's like a, it's like a strange addition. Like it's not like a normal armband. It's not the armband that Tatum wears. That's like, uh, like like the like material big, that you would the body. sweatband. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like, like it's medical like his tape. version of a barbed wire tattoo. <laughs> it's just it would the be thin around the all, bicep. Another like thing on the wheel is like everybody has a temporary tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> what is the tattoo of? Red smoking a cigar uh anything like they just have like a variety pack like they go to like the dollar store and get a bunch of them uh pro mp i don't think it's disrespectful i think it's more of like a hey he's playing like that one time he scored 92 points in a pro am game but he's doing it in the nba like i think that's what people are trying to say i don't think it's like this guy can only play in pro ams i just think it's like he's on another level he looks like he's playing in a pro am because he's dominating mm. Mm. yeah fair enough um I know we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to let's see how much intrigue they uh, retain, how much of our attention they can keep going throughout the. Uh, well, the, the second unit guys are not going to take their foot off the gas, so that is the most entertaining part of recent games, and I think that's going to continue, including Monday night against Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. All right, shall we go to trivia? Are you all ready? Let's do it. Oh, yeah, all right, chat off. Ready. Take the chat down. Right, yeah, take the chat on, down. Hold on. Chat's off. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Let's get into this. So, trivia question today. Uh, it is a 1-0 series. Bobby is up one nothing. We are going to be doing, since 2010, the most fouls in a 10-game span. Wow. The, season. the, wild <laughs> the most fouls committed by a Celtic in a 10-game span, i.e., I'm going to say an obscene number, so I don't give any indication. Say uh, Sam Hauser committed 100 fouls in 10 games, 10 fouls a game if that was legal. That is the number 100. So how many fouls since 2010? So it, or excuse me, excuse me, since 2000. So the 99-2000 season. Since the 99-2000 season, including that year, uh, how many fouls? And I have eliminated for context, not that this will help you or not, but single season. So it can't be like, oh, two games at the end of this season and then into the next season. No, no, no. In, in like it is it has to okay. be in the same season that it happened. Not again, not that that is like giving you some obscene <clears throat> advantage or help. Uh, but since the 2000, since the turn of the century, the most fouls by a Celtics player in a 10 game span. Uh, and Bobby, since you won last time, we'll lead with you. I'll keep filibustering if you'd like a, a second. No, no, I, we're good. Um, pause, but. one props to what led you to this question. Um, I saw that I could do the span thing like that feature in Stathead, so I was playing around with it and toying with it. I was going to do threes because, uh, to be frank, Sam Hauser is like, oh, that's a new thing, but I figured y'all would get that, and like that's kind of boring. So I wanted something that would be like a wide range of y'all could mess it up super easily because you don't know. Like Who who knows who has the most fouls in 10 games span? So I, I wanted something that wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, let's go through the obvious answers. You know what I'm saying? I wanted something that would be like, hmm. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Um, chat has guesses already. That's not a bad one, chat. I'll tell you that. All right. I will start. This is this is so this is such a good one. I will start with Antoine Walker. 
Antoine Walker. And I'm going to warn you again, because I don't want it to be any indication of how long it takes <laughs> me. It, I, like, I'm going yeah, to have We're going to read your body language. Right. We're going to try to read your body language. You can read it as much as you want. So Antoine Walker is the first guess. I have to find the top of him because there's a lot of repetitive names up here. All righty. Antoine Walker in a 10-game stretch gets you 43 fouls. All right. I like that. Well, it's pretty good guess. To you, Sam. Uh, <laughs> Not a fan. I of had question. a guess I wanted to burn, but this makes me nervous now. <clears throat> Don't second guess yourself. Next, Daniel category. Tice. Oh, Daniel that's Tice. A good one. I don't think he plays Maybe enough. Top one. I think if you did fouls per minute, it would be different. <laughs> that gets you forty-one. So, oh, oh not bad, not bad. All right, I right, punch back. Let's go. <laughs> right there, right there. Right I would have been devastated if he took that. That's why I had to guess it. Yep. <clears throat> that was an inspiration for the question. Curious how many he got in a certain yeah. game span. That was definitely up there for why I did this. Let's go. I'm glad you didn't reveal that. I would have been so mad. Because that that like as soon as you put out the question, I was like, it has to be him. Like he he's gotta have some sort of play in this. Yeah, I didn't want to take it out of the way. <clears throat> I want to leave it open to the guesses. What are we thinking, Bobby? Pondering a few names in mind. Uh, I don't love this guess. It is since but, 2000, RJ. Just clarifying. Oh, shoot. I did have it wrong on the screen, but it is since 2000. Let's see what Kendrick Perkins did. Oh, that was category. my next guess. I'm dead. The chat has guessed that already. It yeah, has been one of the good. chats. Kendrick Perkins gets you 40. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Pressure remains mm -hmm. on, which is not good. <laughs> it's right there for you. You need, you need it. That's not a bad category, Rui. I might have to steal that. You're going to have to remind me, though. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> Struggling. It's all right. What about Baines? We're going to guess Baines. Aaron Baines. I like that. Alrighty. I feel like he was just down there to bump into guys. Don't know if he was a foul monger, though. Smirk says bad. Aaron Baines. Gets you. Oh. <laughs> 33. <laughs> oh, Sorry, it took me. Some. But moving forward, that could be solid. Like yeah. there could be a dip, or we just don't get them. It's tough. I mean, not the worst guess of all time, I suppose. Could have been worse. Ugh. It's a tough question. Stuff because it could be anybody realistically. Like all it takes yeah, it is a few be. big games of fouls. I'm kind of cycling between a few here. All right, I'll take a chance. Mm -hmm. Mark Blount. Mark Blount. Let's see here. See, I'm reading the body language. I'm, I'm reading Mark. the time. The look up. <laughs> Forty-two. Oh, not a boy, Mark. Bad. Gets you 42. Play defense with your hands, not your feet. Everyone knows it. RJ, I believe that is pretty high on the list. Yeah, that's a pretty good guess. Yep, Jared, that one is up there. Joey, I don't think so. I don't think he's on here. At least not in the first few pages. It's not terrible, but... <clears throat> this is tough. I'm in a tough spot. I feel like I'm dead. <laughs> All it takes is one slip up on either side, regardless, anyway. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess Paul Pierce. Paulie Pierce. Babe. Let's see. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys read it too, way too much. I bet it's a good guess. Uh, yeah, it gets you 40. Not bad at all. Okay. Yeah, All see? Right. I said response. yes, read way too response. into it. I need to update these. Down 11. Yeah. Got work to do. Plain and simple. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I don't think. I'm very nervous that. about this guess, uh-huh. but it's one of those where it could be horrible, or I could leave it on the table and Sam takes it and it costs me. Marcus Smart. Oh boy, no, no reaction from either side. So tells me I need to leave. I didn't guess Marcus because I know he had more career steals and fouls. Gets you forty. Let's go. But he also had a lot of steals. <laughs> Probably. <yes. laughs> Uh, boy. RJ says, is Bobby going to walk the dog and give Sam a chance? No dog no. walking for Bobby update. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't have a chance. Chalked. <clears throat> well, all it takes is one bad guess and you're in it. So don't, don't, never say never. I feel like Tristan Thompson is on there. Is that your guess? Yeah. All right. Let's take a look. I don't know if he played enough, though. Uh, do we know if he even played 10 straight games? Uh, give me a second. I need to, I need to load a new page. Now you can read That's it into the body language. Bad. Now you can read it into the body yeah, language. Give terrible. me a second. I lost. Oh, Stathead takes a second to load too, so we're going to have to sit here and wait for me to figure it out. <laughs> Hold, please. That was a, a tilt guess. Yeah, you're mad. Not mad, just desperate. It's just like, oh, I have nowhere to go. Alrighty, I found it. Gets you 29. Excellent. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's possible for me to win. Well, well it depends on the guess. But... Yeah, Bobby just needs to have a stinker. Ashton, yes, that's the top answer. Good job. You leave the door open, Bobby? Try not to. I assure you for that's content. not the goal. There's no point for content. here. Uh, for content. Guess Delano Banton for content. <laughs> that would be insulting. <laughs> It'd be more insulting if you guessed it and you still lost. <clears throat> Scrolling Twitter as I wait. A Detroit school teacher <laughs> got fired for refusing to delete her rap videos, so she made one with her former students as revenge. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> Sam, Joey Spatula is typing the chat. Sam, guess blank. I know you're feeling me typing this into your brain. <laughs> I have. That's funny. I have. There's someone I'd rather guess, but I just I don't know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Rondo. Rondo. Let's take a look and see where that puts you. That gets you. 35. I'll take that. So I need 47. Wait, did I do the math right? Yeah, you have 190. Oh, wait. You, need, you, no. need, you would need... I need 57. Yeah, I'm which dead. unfortunately does make you dead. Uh, if How it was 47... Work? If it was 47, you'd be alive, though. <laughs> How do the lifelines work? <laughs> it doesn't get you extra points, brother. <laughs> Sam I'm gonna, is not back in it, Jerry. <laughs> he sees it. I'm going to take... We can get specific chatters. We can, we sure. can roll with our boys. Oh, I'll you take, can't take Joey's now that I'm I told you. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing Joey. <clears throat> sure, okay. I'm going to take Ashton's last guess. Wow, what a I told you. Did you cheat? No, that seems like a cheat. cheater. That's I said cheater. Ashton correct. That's, that's the cheater. top answer. That's yeah, a cheater. Yeah, but you didn't say. Shout out to Ashton one, but secondly, Sam's All cheater. right, I'll, I'll guess. I have not opened the chat. Though. Make a real uh, guess, yeah. Great because guess. I watched Greg Sneezma since I didn't guess top. him that first time. Uh, uh, it gets you 42. That would have been better than your other one. Yeah. I want to see what the top one was. I want you to guess. Don't look at it. I already looked. Oh, Bobby, any idea? You're so lame. <laughs> you got... so, no, I looked after the game was over. <laughs> I know. But I, like, saw, yeah. I saw two names in the chat 
I saw Jared Sullinger from Ashton. Shout out to him. <coughs> and mm-hmm. I saw Vitor Favarani, which is an elite name drop. Um, I was curious, though. Brandon Bass was on my mind throughout the competition. Brandon Bass. Jared Sullinger was number one, by the way. Brandon Bass. Uh, yeah, props to Ashton. He's not up to the top. What did Sullivan have? Was Rasheed Wallace on there? Because he came off the bench, but he probably was just fouling. <laughs> Brandon Bass was 30, <coughs> excuse me, 33. Um, Bass was 33? Rash- yeah, 33. Rasheed Wallace was, uh, first, Jared Sullinger was 48. So, Wow. If I really <laughs> didn't just sell on those two, I could have had a chance. I know. Uh, you guys thought, or maybe Sam at least, like you thought too much of players that would foul rather than just players who played a lot and also yeah. like. No, I was definitely good. considering minutes. I even almost like, said it at one point and I cut myself <laughs> off just in case. You guys missed the top five names on the board. Top six names on the board. So Sullinger. Is Michael S- Olo Candy on there? Mm, he's not yeah. in the top something. Okay. Antoine Walker was the seventh name on the board. Okay. So there was Sullinger, and I'm not yeah. looking at the chat. Mm-hmm. Was Garnett on there? Uh, no, he's not in the no. top something. Shaq? He, he was up there, but he wasn't top seven names. Shaq was... Um, Jermaine O'Neal? Jermaine, Jermaine O'Neal Don't wasn't up there. He's not in the top five. No, Shaq, Shaq wasn't in the top page. Top five, again, you guys, you got to think of players who played a lot because of the era and also just bad at the time, at least. Rasheed Wallace was 30. Is Tyler Zeller no. on there? No, Potapenko. Um, no, Zeller wasn't on here. Uh, second on the list, tied with Sollinger for first, actually. 06. Al Jefferson? Mm-mm. I don't know. Scal? Mm-mm. Big man. Bad. I don't know. I don't know. Ray- <laughs> Rafe LaFrance. Okay. 48. Uh, other one, a big man who has been in. I'm pretty sure it's his name in trivia before. He has been mentioned. You said uh, big man. Jared says Amir Johnson. Not oh, Amir he did Johnson. Foul a lot. Third place, another big man from 2000 who has been again in trivia before. There it Rogers? is. Jared's got it. Tony Batie. Yeah. I considered him. I did think he did. Of that he did too. enter the brain. <clears throat> Next one, a name that I haven't heard in a long, long time from 2009. This happened in 09. This guy has played big no, a total. Big he played a total of 27 games for the team. And he had 44 fouls in 10 in a row. Mikey oh, Moore. Like, yep. <laughs> well done. Uh, and then Sam, if you pulled Mikey Moore out as a guess, I'd just give you the round. <laughs> no, I would have been drug tested. Or, or There's two like, more who are uh, tied with Antoine Walker. Both are names that you know. One in 2014 and one in 2005. 2014. He's not a guy you'd think of about a fowler, but he was young at the time. You said both Avery Bradley? You know? it, both young. names you know, yeah. Kenny Kelly Anderson? Olenek? Kelly Olenek, yeah, 43. That and makes then sense. Cause he can't the last, move. Yeah, the last one was in... Uh, 2005 again. Guard is the first guard. On the Kenny list. Anderson? Mm-mm. Gary Payton? No. JR Bremer? Was young, young at the time. Young at the Very time. Very young. Very Delonte? young. Delonte? Yeah, Delonte West. <clears throat> first guard on the list. All righty. That's, That's a 2 0. S- region. Devastating. 2 0 series to Bobby. I've lost like six games in a row. <laughs> it's a tough this stretch for you. Awful. I haven't won in like two weeks. I'm like the I Pistons. <laughs> It got the bounce back a little crazy. You, you hope you get a good team at the Celts of the round table tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, got, got the debut the of a new show tomorrow. Yeah, well, f- chat, who's it's here? Week. We'll be live at uh, 6 to 6.30 around then tomorrow with Celts of the round table. A bunch of friends will be hanging out. Appreciate you all for tuning in. Uh, make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Check out Bobby's work at si.com slash NBA slash Celtics, and I will let Sam wrap it up. Yep. That's it for us. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at the notification bell so you don't miss any of our streams like these. We're here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for Talk and Seas Live. We have streams before every single game for pregame a half hour before. Our game recaps are up the day after games at 5 a.m. And our pods drop Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. You don't want to miss any of it. Leave a like, comment, tell us you were here. Uh, follow us on Spotify and Apple too. The pods and game recaps are there for you. 
Uh, follow Bobby on Twitter at Bobby Kravitsky. You can find him for SI Media, part of Inside the Celtics. All of his coverage is there. It's great coverage. He's at the games, the practices. You want to follow Bobby. You can also find us via email. HBTCpod at gmail.com is the way to go. Our pod recording is later today, so if you still have thoughts, go ahead, get them in. You can find us on socials at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook is just the name of the pod. All streams are on Facebook, they're on YouTube, and they're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's Money NBA. Bobby's, again, is at Bobby Kravitsky, and mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye.